Hey, Indie Former, Josh here. And Lawrence. What do you get when you cross an indie game with Kickstarter? An Indie Former video, of course. Kicking things off, The Bard's Tale 4 is the next instalment in the dormant yet popular CRPG series from way back in the 80s. The project is being handled by the fittingly titled In Exile Entertainment. Founded by former Interplay employees including Brian Fargo, the studio has already twice successfully revisited CRPGs of yesteryear through Kickstarter. They made last year's reboot to Fallout Precursor Wasteland and are releasing their spiritual successor to Planetscape Torment this year. With such a track record and the funding goal already completed, The Bard's Tale 4 should be coming out of exile in 2017. Making it back-to-back -back reboots of old series, we have Shenmue 3 in the 5 spot. In 1999, the original Shenmue earned the Guinness World Record for the most expensive game ever produced. It, along with the sequel, was some of the last hurrahs for the Dreamcast. With its uniquely large cinematic and narrative focus, the series garnered critical acclaim and is now looked back on as a classic. But unlike other classics that come to mind like Zelda, Shenmue didn't keep going. The series was discontinued after the sequel due to poor sales. Now, enter the Kickstarter resurrection story. Raising a million dollars in fewer than two hours after the announcement at E3, Shenmue 3 broke a new Guinness World Record for the fastest game to crowdfund a million dollars. It's a great narrative, but as Ben Kuchera wrote for Polygon, there is a lack of transparency regarding the game's budget and its other investors. If you want to know more, the Kuchera article is in the description. With its polygonal beauty, it's not too hard to tell that Faceted Flight is inspired by the original Star Foxes. It also takes influence from other classic pilot simulators of the 90s in the shape of the X-Wing series and pilot wings. The thing about Faceted Flight is that it takes the flight genre to the new skies of virtual reality. It's a move that makes a lot of sense. Stomach flipping barrel rolls, sharp turns, quick dodges and gravity defiance in general could be perfectly amplified with the immersive powers of virtual reality. The idea to transport players into the cockpit is noble, but at this stage may be a little impractical. VR hardware is still primarily intended for developers, and consumers are yet to take it up. In the meantime, perhaps Star Fox Zero's innovative use of the gamepad's gyroscope can bridge the path to a full VR flight game. Shape of the World is an exploration game that offers an alternative and experiential experience. As you move, the procedurally generated world pops up before your eyes. We've seen something similar in how the platforms rise up in Bastion, but Shape of the World does this on a much grander scale, with sky reaching trees and cliffs ascending before you. That your actions open up this world and give it life is a very profound idea. It's distinct from playing God, in which you create as of your own volition. Your actions are still just as consequential, however. It's just that they have little intention, and the results are more spontaneous. In this way, the game strips you of what you know and puts you in a position to simply react uninhibited to what happens before you. This is definitely aided by the unnatural colours and minimalist setting that makes clear the game's world is not from our own everyday world. In fact, we're removed from our own world so we can experience and learn things about ourselves free of our everyday inhibitions. It's definitely not the most content-packed or objective focus of games, but Shape of the World tries to provide something different. Hello? If White Knight and Dark Echo had a baby, it could well be Perception. 
This narrative driven horror game takes the helpless survivor in a haunted mansion formula and makes it a whole lot scarier and harder by making you blind. With the use of echolocation, you can, to a certain extent, map out your surroundings. For it to work, however, echolocation obviously needs sound, and sometimes you'll have to generate your own sound to see. The problem with this is that it reveals your location to the resident monsters known as the Presence. Chuck in some unexplained time traveling and creepy dolls, and you've got yourself a game. Wakey, wakey, everyone. It's another fabulous day in Wellington Wells. The weather is only slightly rainy with streaks of lovely sunshine. Set in 1960s England, We Happy Few is a clown-faced dystopian nightmare. Everyone in the city takes a drug called Joy that erases any bad memories. So basically everyone is on roofies and thinks that their lives are just swell. You've managed to get off Joy and realise the lie you have been living. But before you can escape, you have to deal with the rest of the town reinitiating you to their society. This sets up this roguelike situation, in which every playthrough you try and escape by gathering resources without arousing suspicion to your unconformity. As you continue to play, you learn the history of the city and how this dystopia came to be. With hints of The Giver, The Truman Show and Hot Fuzz, we happy few add some everyday creepiness to the roguelike genre. Thanks for watching guys, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on IndieFormer. <laughs> hey, IndieFormer, Josh here. Lawrence too. What do you get when you cross a geek star- Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what do you get when you cross an indie game with a kickstart? With a kickstart, okay, yep.